Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Steve and Angela Collins coming to you from where are Houston. You? Houston, Texas, yes. the second most powerful, passionate, purposeful coach and speaker in the world. In the world. Hope you guys are fired up and ready for a fantastic day today. Mother's Day. If you're here, it's because you have one. Maybe you have two. Maybe you have several. I have two intentions this morning. Intention number one is to honor the role that mothers play in the lives of all of us. And number two, to encourage and inspire mothers with the reality that being a mother is hard as hell and you probably on a regular basis feel like you're not qualified, there's more you could be doing, you're not doing enough, you wish you could give more, you wish you could do more, you wish you could be more. So let's just acknowledge that very quickly. Um, one of the biggest challenges I know of motherhood that's different when you separate mothers from fathers as a general rule of thumb is uh, guys tend to be more like adventure, hunter, gatherer, go out, beat stuff up, kill it, and drag it home. And um, for the most part, mothers tend to be more nurturing and relationship-based. And so for guys, there's a switch that we shut on and shut off, which is just like, oh, go, go, kill stuff, bring home, uh, go back out. And, and don't tend to be relational as much. And mothers tend to be extremely relational and protective and covering. And so where a guy can flip a switch in his head to check out, I know most moms do not have the ability to do that very easily with a lot of work. And... The greatest battlefield for most mothers is in their mind. And with those limiting thoughts and limiting beliefs, questioning their own ability to do what they're doing well and always believing that they could be doing more. You wanna just talk a little bit about some of the challenges of motherhood, some things that you have um, implemented to make sure your thoughts and your heart are kind of in peace and alignment as you're mothering? Hmm. Well, happy Mother's Day to all the mamas out there. I would just say that um, the one thing that I've probably struggled with the most is am I doing enough for my children? Have I missed gaps? And that mom guilt. Mom guilt is so crazy because I know that's one thing that all of us moms experience. Either working moms, stay-at-home moms, single moms. It's like we're not doing enough. So my encouragement today would be you are enough. You're doing enough. And surround yourself with other women that you um, either would like to model who have gone. There's so many moms that have gone before us. I love to be around older women who have raised teenagers because we're in the teenager phase with four of ours and a couple are still in the younger phase. That phase we seem to be, you know, confident in. However, I'm not afraid to reach out to moms who've gone through that journey of teenagers. So reach out to moms that you can glean some wisdom from and you can really just get that encouragement and that strength from like, keep on keeping on. Absolutely, and you know, one of the things that we realize uh, and that I know you realize as mothers is how critically important it is to you if you could actually manage and control who it was your children, young and teenagers, spend their time with. You, you recognize how critical that, that peer group can be to your child's development or to their detriment. And the charge and the challenge I'm gonna to present to you today is when did that stop? As a woman, if you're single or if you're married, are you around other women who inspire you to do the hard things to keep your family together? If you're a married woman, when you're going through a hard time, you know, I had some guy one time come to me and said, hey, I need to talk to you about something very private. I said, what is it? He said, I'm having problems in my marriage. And I said, I know you are. And he goes, how did you know? I, I didn't tell anybody. I said, because you're married. <laughs> yeah, I, I always joke, there's two types of married people. There's people who are struggling, working their butts off to have a great marriage, and there's people who are lying, right? Or they're medicated, or they just set their standards really low and are okay with being roommates. But if you believe there's more to that, when you go through a hard time as a woman, who are the voices in your life? Are they the ones saying, yeah, your husband is a jackass. He's terrible. You just, you know, forget that. We need to go out and get drunk and just blow him off. Or are you surrounded with women that say, you know what? You guys have built so much together. You guys have, you know, your children. You guys have a lot that, that is at stake here. How can I help you? How can I pray for you? How can I be a part of making this better? Have you read this book? Have you talked to this? Are you 
we get it with our kids how important it is for them to be around great influences, but my question to you is, are you holding yourself to that same high standard where you have intentionally chosen relationships around you that will guard your heart and protect your heart and help you with your thinking and your thoughts and the way that you view your current situation in life or relationships or parenting. So when it comes to the, the mothering that mom guilt Angela talks about, uh, I just want to leave you with this final word of encouragement, unless Angela would want to say anything else, and I have this one little blip at the end. And that is what Angela said. If you can look at yourself in the mirror at night before you go to bed and know that you just loved your kids as best you could with where you are, with the resources that you currently have, if you can say, I loved them the best I could, please understand this. Unconditional love is messy. Unconditional love is painful. Unconditional love is sacrificial. Unconditional love costs you something because you are operating, pouring out into others with no expectation of reciprocation. And that's a very sacrificial love that only the good Lord can fill you up with on a regular basis for you to be able to pour out. So if you can look at yourself at night, and, and you might not have done this right. You might not have done the homework thing right. You might not have had the relationship thing right. You might not have made, it might have been the crappiest McDonald's dinner four days in a row because you're so busy. It, it may have been that you didn't wash the clothes enough and they had to wear something wet or who knows. You guys know what I'm talking about, real life. But if the love was your foundation and you can say you really loved and gave your kids, you do your very best and trust God to fill in the gaps. Angela, anything else you want to talk about? That's it. Well, I'm going to leave you with the final word of wisdom that was given to us by a sweet old church lady at HEB one day when we had all the kids around us and we were absolutely exhausted on our final, I mean, we were like Snapville. We're done. And she could see it. She came over to us and she says, sweetie, just remember something. She says, the days are long. And the years are short. And the years are short. Make the most of your day and make the most of your years. And happy Mother's happy Day to Mother's you. Day. We love you guys.